Now, when you're reading an important document or if children are studying, it's better if what you're reading, don't sit continuously for an hour or two to read a certain document. You can sit to read a document for maybe 20 or 25 minutes and after that, give yourself a break for five minutes. Likewise, children who are studying could study for about 25 minutes and after 25 minutes, give a break for five minutes. Now, when you give a break for five minutes, that is the time when the brain gets the opportunity to sort out and store in the walls of memory what you have absorbed. Likewise, for children, when they have studied something and then they take a break for, say, five minutes, that's the time when the brain sorts, understands, and then sorts the matter properly so that it's easy to recall it for a test or an exam or when someone questions about the matter. Now, how you spend the five minutes break is important. It's essential that children particularly don't sit before the television in the five minutes time, nor should they spend time talking to friends. To give the brain the right time to store the material, it would be better if they do something else, such as brushing up their vocabulary, for instance, or if there is a math problem to be solved, to quickly solve that, or if there is a puzzle, to work on the puzzle. Because when the conscious mind is working on something like that, then the subconscious mind, it has the time to sort things out and put it in its proper perspective in the memory vault for easy recall. So it's very, very important how this five minutes of time, the five minutes interval is spent. And uh, a good use of it, purposefully doing something useful, will make sure that the subconscious mind is given sufficient time, it is given sufficient, the right climate, the right condition to do its work effectively. So this five minutes is essential for every 25 minutes of studies. I'm sure you got my point. Be blessed.